Welcome, one and all, to uh, another episode of CIOs and Bow Ties. I, I, Dave, I had to get away from the uh, the coronavirus, but and uh, decided to go down under, as you can see, mate. So behind me, we have got uh, Sydney Harbour, and uh, we're coming at you from there. And of course, uh, a tribute to Kobe Bryant. I've got my uh, girl dad uh, shirt on. So uh, listen, welcome, uh, Mr. Crook. Good to see you uh, virtually, if nothing else. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It is uh, Wednesday, the 22nd, I believe. Is that right, Greg? Wednesday, yeah, the 22nd have you, have you of April. Track of time in your quarantine. Yeah, that, that certainly has happened <laughs> indeed. And uh, uh, Sydney certainly looks gorgeous. What, th there's no coronavirus in Sydney? Um, no, mate. But... It's, it's no worries down under. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, it does seem that they're actually doing a reasonable job of, uh, of looking after COVID-19 over there. Um, everybody yeah. who happens to be watching us, I just hope you're all safe. Um, and uh, if you do know someone that's suffering with a disease, we show the, uh, the support and strength you could possibly need. Um, but with that being said, uh, stay safe. And Greg and I look forward to, uh, to you enjoying our antics this afternoon. Yes, indeed. And um, I echo that, David. And we've got an interesting one uh, on deck today. And it's really about emotions and investing, investing uh, and emotions, how they play their part. So, we're going to make reference to two uh, handouts, which the um, link will be published down below on each episode. But this, this article was actually called The Market Cycle of Emotions, and it was published by Russell Investments. I need to get that in there. Um, and it has a chart of uh, emotions going from euphoria to despondency and talks about when is the best time to be a buyer and a seller. And a little cheat, cheat uh, a little spoiler alert is it's basically the, the opposite. So in euphoria, you probably want to be selling and in fear, you want to be buying. That's the old blood in the streets connotation. Um, there is another chart. See if I can get that in. Uh, and I'll put a link to it below. And I like this one. It's called a mass Try psychology. Hold it in front of your chest, Greg. In my front. Of me. There we go. There we go. It's called a mass psychology oscillator. You can't really see it too well. But again, the link is below. And why I like this is because it takes the Russell Investments, which is pretty much a, uh, uh, you know, uh, what can we say, just a, a theoretical. And it uh, this chart here turns it into a practical and it actually tells you kind of those, those little voices inside your head, what they would be saying at various points in the cycle. So uh, too late to sell now, the stock yields 5%, you bought it at 2%, et cetera. So, you know, that said, David, um, Let's, let's begin at the beginning, as it were, um, and talk to us a little bit about emotions as it pertains to investing. Craig, um, emotions, yep. I think very simply put, um, investing is, is best done emotion-free. And uh, perhaps that's why professionals in this market actually have a job, um, is to uh, take away remove all that emotion from making investment decisions because uh, at the best of times in life or otherwise, making, making decisions when, uh, when they're emotional, uh, whatever that emotion might be, uh, fear, elation, uh, sadness, whatever it might be, that emotion is going to affect your thinking and we are going to be, our, our decisions therefore are going to be affected by that. So uh, let, let's get through this investment process uh, emotion free if we possibly can. I'm not sure it can right. be done. Well, okay. So two, two points to come back at you on that one. The first one is even professional investors, unless they are algorithms, uh, are human beings with emotions. Mm -hmm. So it brings to mind the old Warren Buffett anecdote where he says, you actually don't really need to be a genius to be a, a phenomenal investor. In fact, sometimes being a genius is to your detriment. Uh, he says, I, I think what he means by that is it's more a case of controlling your emotional boundaries between fear and greed. Uh, and that is actually more useful in investing than being a, a super analytical guy or gal and analyzing things to the nth degree before you pull the trigger. What, what do you think about that? I think it makes all the sense in the world, Greg, because uh, too much analysis does mean you're making decisions uh, with your mind, perhaps sometimes working overtime. Um, whereas uh, if we can just get to the, uh, the bricks and mortar, to the numbers, the zeros and, uh, and ones, uh, we are much more likely to make the right decisions under those circumstances. Talk to us a little bit about short-term memories. I mean, 
you know, we seem to have this short term bias as in we only remember the most recent past, which has been uh, uh, right now a little bit fearful. But, you know, you go back to 2008 and then the 10 year bull market subsequent to that, people tend to have short term memories or, or feel short term. Uh, Greg, I can give you a, a practical, a real example that uh, was happening in the last half, almost certainly the last quarter of 2019 and the beginning parts of 2020. Um, mm. You know, people literally had forgotten what happened in the 07s, 08s and 09s and mm -hmm. uh, were chasing. Uh, there was this uh, FOMO, the fear of missing out seemed to be uh, mm. driving everybody's drive to, to buy the, the next best uh, equity. Um, already we had seen from a fundamental perspective, we had seen earnings, although positive earnings, they were coming down. And we had seen GDP growth not as high as it had been previously. The fundamentals were telling us things weren't as, uh, as sound as they had been previously, but yet we still saw markets chasing highs, uh, which they uh, did so until uh, the, the big right. fall in uh, earlier this year. Okay, so there's a few points that come out of there, and I'm going to keep some of them to our second half, not to steal it all away. But uh, you raise an interesting point. You know, as the professionals looking at the fundamentals, the market became stretched um, fundamentally a lot sooner than they became stretched uh, emotionally or let's say euphoric. And you and I both know how long we had to spend um, speaking to people about uh, tempering their euphoria, if it will. So, so perhaps maybe why is the sell decision? It seems to me that it's so much easier to buy in a, in a rising market than it is to sell in the market. And I coined the phrase, the sell decision seems actually to be the hardest, which is why a lot of people get caught as the market crests over. I have no doubt there are deep psychological reasons for that, Greg, but it's absolutely right. Um, we all know that uh, the way you make money is you buy low and you sell high. I mean, it's, it's, it's the basis of everything we do, right? Um, and everybody knows that rule. However, when things get high, people are reticent to sell. And I think I'm going back to that uh, FOMO, the fear of missing out again. Mm -hmm. uh, is it FOMO or is it just the fact that uh, you know, things are so good, things are so great, I, I must continue, I must participate. Um, and then before you know it, under certain circumstances, it's too late. And, and then right. it becomes really difficult to sell. If you thought it was difficult to sell when markets were going up and you were on the long side, wait until you have to, uh, you yeah. have to sell when things are falling. Exactly as it's detailed here. Again, the link yep. is down below on this one. But, you know, you reach a, reach a point where the, the person says, it can't go any lower. I see it got, it actually went lower. I've lost so much money already, I just can't sell out now. So that's interesting. And the other, the buy low, sell high phrase, I'm, I'm actually going to recoin it a little bit. And I'm going to say it might be better to buy high and to sell even higher, as in the, the trend is your friend. Um, anyway. Dave, let's, uh, let's pause there for a second and um, take a short break. And when we come back on our second part, we're going to delve a little bit more into the psychology behind investing. Super. Look forward to it.